appreciate you coming on as always. Always appreciate the wealth of knowledge you bring. So let's get right to it. Um, unfortunately, we we all were privy to see a young man named Ralph Powell Yair. And uh, I apologize if I'm saying that wrong. Young man out of Kansas City, 16 year old boy, and went to pick up his twin brother and got gunned down by simply knocking on the wrong door. Man at point blank range shot him, walked up to him as he was laying on the ground, shot him again. Went to multiple houses trying to receive help after the third try. He finally got some help, albeit laying on his hands and or laying on his stomach and having to put his hands up. Very unfortunate situation. Young man is doing well right now, or at least recovering. Um, good news is he's back home. But we'd love to hear your thoughts on on this situation and, and get your perspective because you always have a very strong perspective on these type of situations. Well, let's back off. Let's divide one by 360 million and see what you get. Very, very, very small number. Mm. Now, there is another problem that's developing. Around here, we're finding that Memphis, car burglary capital of America, murder capital of America, kidnapping and rape capital of America. They're beginning to use 12, 13, 14 year old children to carry off the crime. Crimes. We've had a rash in the inner cities across the country where the gangs and other entities are using 13, 14, 15 year old children as the assassins because they mm -hmm. convinced the child that as juveniles, they will get scant time. Now, let's suppose that the person that pulled the trigger had gotten threats and it was to the wrong place. Maybe we got an overreaction, but let's see what happens before we go off and start with the condemnations. Uh, we ought to do that. Back off of step and don't get taken in by the media trying to hype something to push an agenda. Maybe somebody was wrong. Maybe somebody's not. No one's been charged right now. And one of the things we ought to demand is that the DAs, the AGs, attorney generals not be so responsive to what they hear on the media and rush to get somebody when. Right. To pressure, which sometimes ought not be there. So let's see what happens before we start pontificating on what went on, because I know from doing what I've done for about 50 years, quite often what comes out in a courtroom is nowhere near what the press says it is. Huh. Right. I've even had a few situations where the jury came back, honestly, on three occasions, they came back with the exact same question. Uh, on a homicide case, Your Honor, if we feel the victim deserved killing, do we have to convict the defendant? Mm. Now, I don't say I'm not intimating that's what's here, but I think it's right. best that we all just back off in what is Obi-Wan till Luke in Star Wars. I do what? Patience is a great virtue. <laughs> Absolutely. I was thinking that too. I'm like, you know, what if that's not the real story, what they're telling us? What if he tried to break into his house? Like, we don't really know all the details of the story to be, you know, rushing to judgment. I was actually thinking mm -hmm. about that, but, you know, the media kind of paints a narrative. Then you have, which I want to ask you about, these people who I call ambulance chasers that run to these uh, hot Yeah, that, yeah. you know what? Well, put it this way. Mm hmm there is this little thing about what you really know versus what people think you know. Now, can you imagine a doctor who went through medical school, but he's never been an intern or a resident, and he's got medical office open and he's treating you, but he's never gone in and had that thing where there are a lot of patients he's had to deal with under supervision, yes, so he learns his business? Well... Toward the end of my time on the bench, the state bench, which has been more than 20 years ago, 22, 23 some years ago, I started noticing that people that got a lot of hype would have eight, nine, 10 clients in my courtroom on a given day. 
but they couldn't go to trial because it was an absolute disaster because they didn't know their way around a jury or a trial because they'd never been in one or had been in very few. Mm-hmm. And that isn't limited to defense or being a plaintiff's lawyer. I remember when I was on a bench, we had a DA that was too, well, the district attorney who got appointed was two and a half hours late to his swearing in. Why? He'd never been to the criminal justice center. They had to go find him and bring him because he didn't know where to go. Wow. But he was the new DA. Uh, We've had judges that I'm familiar with who were sworn into the bar 30 years old, which was the minimum in the state of Tennessee. And four days after they got sworn into the bar, got sworn in as a superior court judge with unlimited trial jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. So biggest rookie in the courtroom is the judge in charge. Now you can imagine how big a mess that would cause. So it's all endemic across this thing, new and improved and forget experience. That's an inconvenient thing that doesn't fit the narrative of we all are entitled to get a participation ribbon rather than actually having to compete. Mm -hmm. It's also got to do with, I've wanted to be this since I've been 13. Yeah, but what did you do to prep yourself? Well, I always took courses so they would lead directly there. I didn't want to do something to my GPA and risk being able to get there. Yeah, well, you got there now and you don't know crap. So what's your point? You're useless. Now, one of the things that I would point out, when Mm -hmm. somebody's considering what you do, Go back and evaluate what the liability policy was that, say, a a city had. Uh, Then go back and look at what's been done. Now, black people don't appreciate their expertise in things, but there's a gentleman by the name of Willie Gary. Willie Mm -hmm. Gary practices in Florida. Willie Gary is 75 years old this year. Well, he holds the absolute record for the large, largest jury verdict that withstood appeal in American history. And out of the top 10, he's got four of them. Out of the top 10 largest settlements in American history, he's got five or six of them. Mm. So he is one hell of a trial lawyer one hell of a trial lawyer. And in 1981, he got a a jury verdict for $980 million that stood up on appeal. And when it was affirmed in 1983 slash 84, within five years, it had gotten up to a billion and a quarter dollars. And that was in 1985 money. So why does nobody go to him when they have a case that needs to be resolved? But And then some of the people that I've talked to, I guess you would say consulted with or asked to consult with, and I've talked to them. They aren't even aware of what the law is, but it is what it is. So be careful of running around with hype. And also another thing, we have a problem here in Memphis that raised its head and everybody is asking, what are you going to do about so-and-so? And And so I said, well, before you talk about that one, how about the 652 families who've lost somebody in the last 25 months? That's more than just one. And then when I look at that family, I say, okay, they're acting all aggrieved and bringing in everybody from around the country, but they put the boy up for adoption and he got adopted by a couple when he was six years old out in Los Angeles and got encouraged to come back to Memphis to meet his biological family and he died and the biological family cut the family that actually raised him all, raised him up off from everything and they're after the money. So yeah, Mm. be careful. Yes, sir. Before you hire anybody, ask how many trials they've had. Mm, that brings and up a lot of these people you would have, they haven't. That's how many they've had. Goose mm. egg. Whew. 
Wow. So be careful. That brings up another um, question I would like to ask. And my cousin brought it up actually before we started the show. And you also kind of just um, highlighted it. Out of all the murders that occur in this country, and we see, there's plenty of them on all kind of levels. How are certain ones picked and put into the media and put into our face over others? Do you have any idea on how that's? And it's Tuesday selected? at 117 p.m. Everybody's out to lunch, and you got a 21 year old, 22 year old who's sitting in the newsroom, and he's going through uh, his emails, and he decides to check a net, and there's an interesting case. He puts it on. Uh, somebody else does the workup. The on air person sits in front of the camera, he's not seen it. And he's there and says, afternoon in so-and-so, we had an interesting situation. And he reads what's going down. And he's well-versed in Mac C45 or something. Makeup. Is my makeup hard, you know, as the dirt on right, you know. 